Okay, so <clears throat> you probably don't need to be a rocket scientist to see what happened here. So what we have here is a switch mode power supply. You've got a pulse width modulator chip right here and a transient voltage uh, diode uh, that was here. <laughs> and this is completely ruined. And this typically happens because of uh, too high voltage uh, making it into the, the circuit. Uh, typically as a, as, a, as a power surge or transient voltage anomaly. And um, somehow this uh, circuit basically absorbs way too much energy when, when that anomaly happens. So let's go and have a look at um, what went on there. Okay, so I'm not going to do a big setup here. This is going to be a fairly quick job. Um, so I'm just going to work on some scrap papers just to protect the work surface from scratches and abuse. So before we do anything, first make sure the circuit is safe to work with. So we put our multimeter on DC voltage. We turn this board around. Here's this uh, 450 volt capacitor. It's 150 microfarads. It shouldn't hold the charge for very long, but you never know. So but, never make assumptions when it when it gets to these kind of things. So what we're first going to do is just to see if we get a voltage across this. And I don't see any voltage here, but make very sure that the probes isn't insulated in some kind of way. Sometimes you got flux and stuff on the solder and it causes an insulation, but it seems that there is no voltage. Let's just make sure that my probe is working. Okay, so my probes are working, so this reading is quite reliable. So for this reason, I can safely put my finger on there and it shouldn't cause any electrical shock. That's the only part of the circuit that I can see really uh, can carry any kind of dangerous charges. Like here's a 2200 microfarad capacitors but they're like 50 volts so um, this is a kind of a low voltage area. These are very small capacitors so they don't really carry much charge. Uh, I was just com com more concerned about that one but that one is, is fully discharged so it's quite safe to work on the circuit. So the transop diode that um, we are replacing here is a Vichet. It's a P6KE180A-E3-54. That's the part number. And what I'm going to do is that pulse modulator chip I'm going to replace that as well because that's just way too close to where all this catastrophic failure happened and it's a relatively sensitive device. So I don't want to risk um, having an IC there that's supposed to do pulse width modulation and doesn't work properly because that can also cause a, a, quite a degree of, of damage. So. Um, the, the chip we're going to be replacing there is a Viper uh, 12AD-E and uh, that's a switch mode power supply pulse with modulating and regulating IC and but I'm quite sure by replacing those two that and that should solve a problem. Traditionally I would replace these optocouplers as well although in my experience, optocouplers are quite robust, so it might be a little bit of an overkill to first go there. I mean, if there is further problems, I might investigate them too. But uh, capacitors can get damaged with this kind of voltages, but 
at this stage for evidence takes me there. So I'm just going to replace that and see what happens after that because I'm, I'm quite sure usually the problem remains fairly local. I don't see a lot of damage in the rest of the board. So I've, I think once that this is sorted out, not sorted out, but sorted out, uh, that we will um, probably see a working unit. So let's, let's dive in and, and fix this. Okay, so we're going to put the diode in with a cathode to the outside of the board. That's how it should be positioned. I'm not going to put this all the way down, I'm just going to leave it hanging in the air a little bit. That way, if it blows again, it doesn't do more damage to the board. So, cons considering that these tracks are basically completely ruined, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these pins and bend them over. I don't want to leave that there and I'm going to, to bend it over so that I can just solder it onto the closest pin right next to it. Add a bit more solder here. And what I'm going to do is to bend this one over to this closest track. Right here. So, yeah, this, this isn't pretty. There's no way to burn all your burn tracks on your board and to toast and then making it pretty that's not going to happen but we can make it work we can definitely make it work so this is quite clean so as you can see, it, it, it's definitely not pretty, but it should do the job.
So the power switch is in the on position, the power cord is plugged in but there's no power on the power cord so from a safe distance where I can very quickly put it on and off um, I'm going to turn the power on and see if a little light comes on. It is, the switch is on a on mode so I should get that LED coming on. And the LED is on so we've got power. Okay, so we've got it now plugged in. Um, I've got it connected to my NAD amplifier. And we're going to see if it works. Let's first play the music without it and then we're going to turn the sub on and see if it does what it's supposed to do. Okay, so now we're going to turn it on. Looking in the eyes. 